Is your CV axle bootless grease like this one? Then you might want to replace it. Keep watching to see how simple this fix actually is. Welcome to this video where we will install this CV boot to this Jetta. For tools, we're going to use a half inch ratchet, a half inch torque wrench, a 3 8 torque wrench, a little primer that you can pound on the back, also in the long format. A short screwdriver, a bigger screwdriver, I'm just using two different hammers but one is probably good enough, a knife, make sure it's a sharp knife, nothing is as dangerous as a dull knife, a 29mm socket, a quarter inch adapter to go on the impact gun, a T20 Torx to remove some covers from underneath, a 17mm socket, to remove the wheel, a 80 millimeter wrench, a 3 8 12 inch long extension, a half inch to 3 8 adapter, a triple square 10 millimeter socket, I guess they call them triple square because it's like three squares, a 3 8 swivel, I'm gonna use a half inch Milwaukee impact gun to remove the tire and for other purposes. I really like Milwaukee tools, they work really good for me, they also have these different settings in the bottom here. And then you can also always see how full the battery is. They are overall really nice tools. They're brushless and the batteries last for a very long time. And that's why I also got this little one. It's a Milwaukee as well. You can see I really love them. I also got a Milwaukee flashlight. And then you will also need special pliers like these to install the clips that go around the CV joint boot. Some people also just use some old side cutters. And for rusty bolts, we're gonna use liquid wrench penetrating oil. This is the best stuff you can get. That's what I think anyways. Oh yeah, and we're gonna use a whole lot of paper towels as well for cleaning the axle. You don't have some of these tools? No reason to worry. I put all the tools and parts that I use in the description. Check them out at a great price. Those links will take you straight to the most trusted seller. If this video will be helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to support this channel. We're gonna start removing the tire with this special key and 70 millimeter socket. We'll just put this in. Install our third hand, and then we'll just remove the rest of the bolt. Under the vehicle here, I'm going to spray down this bolt. This stuff works pretty good, this liquid wrench stuff, this penetrating oil, I use it all the time. Then we'll just take our 80 millimeter wrench and loosen this nut. You want to loosen this nut as far as you possibly can. So you might be saying, why are we loosening this nut? Why don't we just undo these three nuts down here to just slide the ball joint out and then we can just take the axe out. Because once you loosen these and then retighten them, you're going to have to do an alignment this way. If you just take out the ball joint, it's going to sit in the same location as it did before. Then we don't have to do an alignment. We'll put on some hearing protection, take our hammer and hit right here as hard as you can sometimes it helps that while you're hammering you just take your pry bar sit in there oh and it's actually loose already but sometimes it just helps to take the pry bar and pry it down while hammering now we'll just take our 29 millimeter socket put it on our half inch ratchet but you can see that the rotor will just spin that's why we're going to take our screwdriver just stick it in the rotor vents and this caliper will stop the screwdriver and then the rotor won't spin. There, it's loose. There's this big old bolt. And then we'll also take the screwdriver out of here. Then we'll take a longer screwdriver and push this axle right through, like so. Now we also got more room here to take this nut all the way off. Now we can finally remove this nut. Now you're gonna have to lift this controller up with a pry bar. I just, there's a hole in the control arm right here. Just like to put the, the pry bar in there. Just pry it up so you squeeze the ball joint in this knuckle. So here we are with the tension on the ball joint. Take this nut off. You can pry it down again. And then just take it off by hand. 
going to straighten the wheel. Just pry it down from the pry bar all the way out. The ball went all the way out of the knuckle. Let's move the knuckle out of the way. So you can see your axle drop out. Now to get at those triple square bolts that you can see at the end of the axle right there. We're gonna remove that cover that we have right here. There is Torx screws, there's one right there. We've got one right here, one down here, or two down here, and then a couple on the bottom. Just gonna take them off with my impact. It is a T20 Torx. Now this should come out no problem. A better view now, isn't it? And then we'll just take them all off for their impact. This is the sixth one and also the last one. If you're wondering, how I turned the axle, I got this bolt started a little bit again. I put the axle back into the hub a little bit. And I just took my screwdriver, just put it in the vents, and then just spin it like that, just like that. So I'm gonna take this one out again, and we can slide the axle back again, back into the vehicle. I'm gonna turn the wheel. Now we get all this space to work with. Remove the axle. Don't ever want to just grab the axle by one end or by this end and just hold it by that one end because you got bearings in here and that is not good for the bearings. So now you want to take your axle that you just took out, put it in a vise, clamp it down, take a screwdriver. Just unpop these clips. And on the other side too. Take your knife and just cut off this old wrecked boot. So take this old boot off now. And you want to make sure you get clean towels. And then just wipe as much grease out of here as you can. So that's probably good enough for cleaning. You just want to throw in your bolt that we took out. Throw it in all the way, or as far as you can, while holding this piece straight. You want to make sure you hit on the most inner ring. You don't want this dropping on the floor. They just pop loose. And you got that removed. Take a rag again. Wipe this out. Clean this. Because we were going to put new grease in here. Side. Clean this. And also, you're gonna have to take this plastic ring off. So, in this box with a new TV boot, you got the boot. You got a big ring for the outside of the boot, you got the small ring for the inside, and the new grease. So we're going to start with the small ring, unhook it. There's just that little hook right here, then I'll hook into there and hold it. Slide it over, slide it over. Take a new boot, slide it over on here. It has to go all the way back over here
Ooh, we'll take our grease out of here. We're just gonna fill this unit up that sits on here. Just gonna fill up with some grease. So when you think you got enough grease in there, but you still have some in the tube, just put it in the boot. Now before you're gonna put this thing on, remember this plastic ring that we took off? And remember the way it was sitting on there? It was sitting on there with a bigger side to the back. There, that's on. And then we're gonna take this unit. Make sure you get it started on the splines. Take your hammer to the to help. Maybe you want to get your boot over it already. And I keep getting it on the splines. There, that's all the way on there. Gonna remove this bolt again, take it out. Put the clamp on the boot. Install the front clamp. So when we have those clamps on there, we are gonna take our special plier, clamp them tight. Same with this one. Now we can take our axle out of the vise and put it in the vehicle. So ready to go in. Install the axle back into the vehicle. I like to put some Loctite on there. It's just a personal thing that I do. You don't have to put any Loctite on there. Now I'll just take this extension with a 10 millimeter triple square and start them like this because I can't really get my fingers in between that tight spot in there. Now the sixth one and also the last one, we have the Loctite. I have seen a Volkswagen Jetta where these bolts have come out and I don't think it will be a lot of fun driving down the road and these bolts coming out. So that's why I'm just taking some precautions. Okay, now with those, all, all those bolts started, we're gonna put this in our knuckle, in our bearing, and just start the bolt. And turn the wheel a little for it. It is recommended to use a new axle bolt. So now that I got that axle bolt started, I can just put my screwdriver in the rotor and turn it with ease. So for this, I'm going to take my impact. This impact has three settings. I'm going to set it to the low setting, number one, so I don't over tighten them. Go around once and then torque them with our triple square 10 millimeter socket and, and that 12 inch extension. So that's all the way around. We're gonna to torque it to 51 foot-pounds. And same as with the tools and the parts, you're gonna find the torque specs in the description as well. So one more reason to check it out. All right, with the torque wrench set to 51 foot-pounds, we'll torque those bolts down. Put the torque wrench on there, and then we'll take our screwdriver and just stick it in the rotor down underneath. That's one. That's two. Three, that's four, that's five, and that's six. That should be the last one. 
So I'm gonna take this bolt again that I just finger tightened earlier because you're gonna have to push that axle all the way in again so you can put that nut back onto that ball joint stud. So we're gonna take our nuts that we took off, pull this ball, control arm down. Start the nut. We'll turn the wheel a little bit. We're back to our 18 millimeter wrench. Tighten this thing down. Just watch the stud that it doesn't turn with you turning the wrench. See, it starts turning. So we're gonna put our breaker bar in here again. Put some tension on there. And then keep spinning. So once you get a little bit of tension in there, you can just take the pry bar out and just torque it without the pry bar in there. You probably already saw that there might be a problem with torquing these because you can't get a torque wrench in between here. So we're just going to take our wrench, just put it on here, and just tighten it. And it needs to be 44 foot pounds. Now we can straighten the wheel again, push this axle all the way in, and install the bolt from the other side. We'll take our torque wrench, Set it to 147 foot-pounds. Put our 29 millimeter socket on here and start tightening this bolt. We'll do our screwdriver trick again. Just jab a screwdriver in the rotor. Then we'll hit the breaker caliper and I can just torque this down without having another person sitting inside and pressing on the brakes. We don't want to forget to install this very important shield. And over their Torx T20, we're just going to install all those nuts. And we're still keeping it on the setting number one because these bolts, they don't have to be very tight. After you torque the spindle nut to 147 foot pounds, you have to go another 180 degrees. So we'll just go 90 degrees down, then we'll not go 90 degrees again. That's 90, 45, that's another 45. I actually did take a breaker bar and then this 1 and 16th inch actually worked better than the 29 socket. Okay, the reason why we got this thing in here, you're going to see that right away, it's going to come in very handy. Because usually there's a stud here or a stud sticking out. But with this Volkswagen, you get a bolt. Now, if you put your wheel on there, you would have to line your wheel up to get in there with the, with the holes that are in the wheel, line them up, and then put the bolt in there. And still holding onto the wheel because there's nothing the wheel really sits on except for this little lip. And with this little tool in here, you can put the wheel on and it will, the wheel will hang on here. And we don't have to worry about lining the wheel holes up with these thread holes. I will just put the tire on. I'm just going to take my big impact gun, set this to number two, so the bolts won't be too tight. And then I will torque them later with the torque wrench. When you get all the bolts tight, make sure you take this thing out. Don't leave it in there. It has to go back in the trunk because it will not stay in there if you drive off with this thing still stuck into the bolt. And then drop the vehicle down and torque all the bolts. You want to torque them to 98 foot pounds. Do not leave that in here 